inside BPC, the home of the Spartans. As we get ready for high school girls basketball between the South Fulton Lady Rebels and the BPC Spartan starting lineups have been introduced. We got starting now for the South Fulton Lady Rebels. Number one, Katie or Kate Stambaugh. Number two, Abby Stevenson. Number three, Hannah Corwetto. Number 10, Tommy Gorsuch. And rounding it out, number 15, Briley France for BPC as they got the first tipping back on the offensive side. They're gonna run out number 10, Madison McGrew, number 12, Presley Brandt, number 23, Sierra Shannon, number 34, Justice Kleinsdent, and number 25, Abby Nelson. South Fulton's first possession here, first quarter action, 0-0 ball game. Three-pointer from the right wings off the right side there for Tommy Gorsuch as the Spartans will walk it up the court. Both teams playing a little slow pace. Spartans work it in. Three-pointer, right wing, bounced around, no good. Rebounded by the Lady Rebels as now they want to push. Transition offense up to the right wing, bounced inside. Now all around, balls on the ground, and we'll get a jump ball, and it will stay with the Rebels. Bushnell Prairie City, coached by Corey Schwartz, with South Fulton, coached by Carl Beebe. Zone defense for BPC. Little 3-2, working around, mid-range jumper is good for Tommy Gorsuch. Two to nothing game here, first quarter, Lady Rebels, Spartans. Right here on TSSR Game Time Live, Will Thomas bringing you all the action, layups too strong, rebounded by South Fulton. Transition offense up quick. 15-footer, too strong, offensive rebound, no, defense rebound ripped away. Right there by Madison McGrew. McGrew will bring it up. McGrew, one of the two, well, actually the lone senior on this squad. Three juniors, the rest are freshmen, so nobody in the sophomore class for Bushnell Prairie, a young Basketball team they are on the court. As Brandt works it around to now to the top of the key as it finds back in the hands of McGrew. She'll drive left, get it poked away. Now back out to the corner. 541 left in quarter number one. Ball's thrown out, and we're gonna get a 30-second timeout by Bushnell Prairie. As we'll keep it right here. Slow pace game here for the first two and a half minutes. Both teams just trying to figure it out. BPC comes out in a 3-2 zone, trying to throw off the defensive side thing. And, you know, give the South Fulton Lady Rebels a uh, credit. They move the basketball around. They have gotten a couple mid-range jumpers to fall. Well, I guess one, but have had some good lucks as South Fulton leads 2-0 here on TSSR Game Time Line, presented by MDH. JoJo's Gaming Parlor offers the best gaming experience in the McDonough County area. Stop in for a cold drink and a chance to take home a nice wad of cash while you're at, while you eat. No, while you're at, at it. Also on game nights, check out TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH Events live on the big screen. Come join your friends at JoJo's located at 776 North Cole Street, Bushnell and cheer the Spartans to victory. Spartan Sports are brought to you by Devin Rally of Shelter Insurance. As BPC floats it over, mid-range jumper high off, can get off the front of the rim there for Abby Nelson. And South Fulton heads all down the court, and that was just out of the reach of Briley France. Full court press by the Rebels. Spartans break it with ease. Right wing, Nelson pivoting, ripping through, puts the ball in the hardwood, goes right. Bounce off to McGrew. 
She thought about the three and said dishes it off. Right corner now. Shannon. Over to Brandt. Brandt back to McGrew. The southpaw. Closely guarding. Give these Rebels some credit. On ball defense is there as that one's almost turned over. Save though. And we're going to get our first foul of the day. Foul's going to be on number one. Kate Stambaugh be her first team first. That one's turned over. The Rebels head the other direction. Stamba out to the corner, back. Inside now, layup is blocked. Oh, we're gonna get a foul there. Great rotation by Sierra Shannon. The lower half of the body though ran into Abby Stevenson and it'll be a foul as Stevenson will go to the free throw line to shoot two. First one, off the left side and out. Second one, up and that's good, three to nothing. And traveling violation. Rebels trying to speed up the Spartans, they did it there. Yes, Presley Brandt. Just took too many steps as the trap was coming. As Brandt then gets the steal, so she commits the turnover and then gets the possession back on the defensive side. That's a good in recovery play. The ball bounces around. Right corner now. Nick inside. And we're going to get a ball, loose ball out of bounds. As we get a pair of subs, number 14 and number 20. So Jersey Jones as well as Jewel Kreps will check in. Worked around South Fulton into the paint. Three pointer left wing. Back iron, no good. Rebounded. Second opportunity for the Rebels. Still in the zone is BPC is that short corner jumper's good by Briley France, the senior. And it's a five to nothing game for the Lady Rebels here on TSSR Game Time Live. Inside. Kleindance, her layup's no good. Outlet pass. Down the court, France up with the right hand. Layup's too strong, bounced around. Who's gonna corral it? And it'll end up in the hands of McGrew. Inside. And we'll get a jump ball and it will stay with the Spartans. Deep two-pointers, good, and the Spartans are on the board. As Jules Kreps knocks down the deep two and a foot on the line, it's a five to two ball game. Oh, they called it a three on the scoreboard. I thought our feet were on the line. Now there it goes, it goes back down to two, so I was correct. Two-pointer, there's a three. Bounced around, no good, rebounded by the Spartans, and then a foul. On the glass, who's going to get called for it? Foul beyond number three. As Hannah Horwell picks up her first. Team second. Spartans working it around. McGrew, top of the key. Turned over. Outlet 
break, fast break, layup's good for Horwittle. Seven to two. Final minute and 50 seconds. Outside, that's a three. Bounce around, no good, rebounded. Second chance opportunity is good. As Justice Kleindens knocks it down for two. Rebels breaking the zone defense. So Spartans, I would have to think, are okay with the jump shots as they're fouled. And Dixie Chenoweth will head to the free throw line. Second team foul on BPC. First one's off back iron, no good. Pair of subs check in. As Brant, as well as Shannon will check in. Second one rattles home. Eight to four. Final 79 seconds of the first quarter. Eight to four ball game in favor of the Rebels. And we'll get a bump foul out on the perimeter. Yes. Number 10, Tommy Gorsuch, will pick it up. That'll be the third team foul for the Rebels. McGrew quickly, corner, back out. Brant, bounce pass to the near side. Swung around, just above the free throw line now. Brant, she dribbles right, spins back left, pass. Intercepted, but touched out of bounds by the Rebels. Get a sub for them. McGrew, left-handed layup off glass is good. Finger roll to like touch. As it's a two-point game here in the final 45 seconds. Quick three, responded. Beautiful shot there by Chenoweth. Lady Rebels up 11 to six. The Grues pass just out of the reach and out of bounds. 25 seconds. Ref will tie a shoe and we'll get back into action. South Fulton, 19, dribbles right. Chenoweth thought about it, we'll get a foul there. Oh no, no foul, a traveling violation. So BPC catches a break. If we get a sub right away, a little offensive defensive, Hannah Horwettle will check in. And as I would expect, BPC could hold for one here, final 12 seconds, McGrew drives left, backs it out. Swings it to the top of the key. Brandt rotates it to the right side. Now to the far corner, or to the near corner, excuse me. Three seconds. Somebody's got to shoot it. Shot's up. And it's no good as it's just long. And that's how quarter number one ends. 11 to 6 ball game. South Bolton in front. As you're watching TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. My experience with McDonough District Hospital was amazing. I have a lot of allergies complicated by nasal problems. And the procedure I had is Vive Air. Dr. Sparks was incredible. The Vive Air procedure is a radiofrequency ablation procedure. She no longer has to do any medications to breathe, so she gets much more restful night's sleep. And a short little office procedure and have somebody that feels like it's totally changed their life means the world. It's a permanent improvement on the quality of your life. It was the community that really drew me back to Macomb. I'm from a small community, uh, and I'm from a farm family, and ultimately I always wanted to practice in a place like that, and I felt that I had uh, the ability to connect to people who with a similar background from me, and the fact that the staff members at the hospital and the support, every, all the support staff at the hospital was also focused with the goal of patient care, it felt like it just all came hammered at home for me. 
Back inside, second quarter action here at Bushnell Prairie Central High School, home of the Spartans. They trail 6-11 to 11 as we start quarter number two. As Raritan State Bank, Bushnell's branch located at 360 South Green Street in Bushnell offers full service banking and loan service for all the banking needs. Come visit the bank of a friendly service or call them at 309-772-2345. Good luck, Spartans. Raritan State Bank is an equal housing lender and a member of FDIC. And so we'll stay with the Lady Rebels. Inside, left block kicked out. Now to the corner. Rotated around, top of the key. Gorsuch now over to Stambaugh as her three rolls in. Offensive rebound, no. One dribble and back up. Layup's no good. A third opportunity, no good. Another offensive rebound, no. Ripped away. Couple good looks there for the Rebels. As Riley France just couldn't get him to fall. The Rebels look to extend their four point lead, unable to. It's now Bushnell Prairie looks to get back into it. Madison McGrew, cross court skip past on the ground. Goes Sierra Shannon, finds France, and France travels. As will be another turnover. Rebels split the zone. Back out, rotated around. Three pointer, right wings. Good for Kate Stamba on a sports corner three pointer. 14 to 6. This was a two point game. The Rebels on a 6 0 run over what has been the last two and a half minutes going all the way back into quarter number one. And we're going to get a blocking foul. Be the first team will be offensive actually. Legal screen. He made the blocking motion where I got confused. So actually the first one on BPC. That one's stolen away by McGrew and she's just not able to corral it as it goes off the fingertips and will stay with South Fulton. Deep two pointer. Rolls home. There for Stambaugh. And it's an eight-point game. Sixteen to six. BPCs have been held scoreless through the first two minutes in change. France looking for somebody. Kicks it to the left. Finds Abby Nelson. Now swung around back inside. McGrew. Lefty layup. No good. Grabs her own board though. Double team looking for somebody. Going to find Nelson, or Shannon, excuse me. She kicks it out. Three-pointer is good by Abby Nelson. And it's a 9-16 game with 5.18 left. Good ball movement there by BPC. People are getting doubled. Find the open shooter, and they did. As the Rebels try to respond, the layup's no good. Bounced around and off the fingertips. I'm happy, Nelson, as it will go out of bounds. Inbounding it will be Riley France. She'll get it to Stevenson, who circled around. Jump shot just short. They by Gorsuch. This feels like a big possession for the Spartans here, trying to cut into a seven-point deficit. Haven't really got anything going on the offensive flow, and that's going to be a foul on Sierra Shannon. King Family Chiropractic, with locations at Bushnell and Macomb, supports Bushnell Prairie City Athletics. 
They offer office hours in Macomb Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and Bushnell Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. To set up an appointment, call 309-837-MYDC or 6932. They also perform DOT and CDL physicals for just $85. Another turnover there for South Fulton. And he'll head back in the direction of the Spartans. And there's once again an opportunity to cut into a seven-point deficit. Between the legs goes Nelson. Now over to the right side to Jones. Back to Nelson, baseline drive. Has a cutter on the bleak side and said, Nelson spins, tries to find that cutter. The pass just came about two seconds too late as it swung back around. Jones, now to Brandt. Brandt's pass intercepted and we're gonna get a traveling violation on South Fulton as Hannah Horwettle tried to lead the fast break and just Took an extra step. And we'll have another jump ball. Madison McGrew is going to check back in. She'll check in for. Sierra Shannon. Inside now. Windance outside, three pointer. Just strong for Jersey Jones and rebounded by South Fulton with 3.49 left, 16 to nine. Second quarter action. Baseline drive, great way to split the zone and she'll be rewarded as Katie Miller will head to the free throw line. First one. Up and good for Miller. Second free throw, that one's no good. Offensive rebound, no good as well. As once again, Abby Stevenson had a good look. As BPC will bring it up. McGrew, Nelson, splits everybody, layup, just off the right side. Good look there. So stays a 17-9 ball game. BPC gets back on defense. And South Fulton throws it out of bounds. Jules Kreps will check in. Freshman guard. As Madison McGrew. Swung around. Jones. Now Nelson. Back to McGrew. She'll work with the right side to the left. Back now to the right. Jones, 251 on the clock in the first half. 17-9 ball game. As the layup's going to be good as Jersey Jones gets straight to the rim for a pair. 17 to 11. Kick out pass. Swung around, three pointer. Rolls off, no good. Rebounded though by Stevenson as she attempted to go up and get it swatted out of bounds. So it will stay with. The Rebels here. Worked around, far corner, another mid-range jumper is too strong, almost another off re offensive rebound it is. Stambaugh, now to Stevenson. She drives baseline, rotates it around, three-pointer, 
Off the right side there, another offensive rebound and put back is good for Horwettel. Nineteen to eleven, offensive rebounding. Name of the game here for South Fulton early. As we got a minute forty-six left. Nelson drives left, pulls it back out. Inside now, stolen away. Horwettel. All the way to the rim, up with the right hand, no good. Offensive rebound, up and good for Briley France. And leads out to, oh, I'm kicking the wrong team to score. It's 21 to 11, 10 point advantage for the Lady Rebels. Nelson. Up the right hand, that one's no good, rebounded. On the ground, ripped away and we'll have a foul. On the ground as it's gonna be on number 23, Sierra Shannon. As it will be the Spartans' second foul, no, fourth foul, excuse me. 14 fouls, so the Rebels are in the bonus the rest of the way and that's gonna only be 64 seconds here in half number one. Rebels back and forth action, passing it around. That jump shot's just too strong. Rebounded by BPC. And we'll have a foul on South Fulton. Torwell was fighting for another offensive rebound. Instead, just picks up the foul. First team foul. 40 seconds. Brant. Inside of McGrew, off the hands and out of bounds. It was a good look there. Madison McGrew just wasn't ready for it. South Fulton rotates it around. Far side, now inside. France, shot rejected by Kreps. And BPC will work it up. Final 20 seconds. They can hold for one if they want. Refs point to the one in the sky, meaning one shot, you would think. 10 seconds. McGrew, now eight. Nelson. Nelson's going to split everybody and get fouled on the floor. Not a bad foul by the Rebels. They had a couple fouls to give here with four seconds. BPC will inbound it underneath their own basket with four seconds. Sub coming in. Deep three, off the rim, no good, and that's how half number one will end. The Rebels have increased their lead out to 10 and lead this one 21 to 11 at the halftime break. You've been watching TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. Now let's head to M Welcome back to halftime here on TSSR Game Time Live, presented by MDH. I'm Dwayne Hewlett. Patrick Osterman, the director of business... What? Tell me again. I, I I know you as the as the media guy. That's what I know you as. And every time I talk to you, it's like I can't I can't ever remember. Well, for the majority of my MDH career, I have been the director of public relations and okay. marketing. But as of uh, February of 2023, that's when I added on the title of vice president of business strategy. Well, see, there you go. See, I, I just what you just you get me you get me all discombobulated. You know, the the email address doesn't change. <laughs> That's that's my problem. It does not, no, if you same. changed the email address, I would have had that. I would have remembered that. But every time, you know, you get something stuck in your head. It's like it's kind of like when I'm announcing a basketball game or something, and I say somebody's name wrong, and then they say it's oh, this is how you're supposed to say it. I always just mess it up. It's just hard <laughs> to change back. You know what I mean? I understand. Well, we're here to talk about MDH, not about all my my shortcomings as an announcer or an interviewer, but uh, a lot of big things happening for MDH here in the last year or so, hasn't there? There has been a lot of uh, really positive things going on. If you come out to our campus, you're going to see the construction for the community pharmacy going on. That is certainly one of our big projects. Uh, we, we've also had a lot of community outreach events, too, over the past uh, six months, I would say, um, really from like summer, fall 2023. Uh, just a lot of positive things going on. Well, one of the things we talked a little bit about last year but didn't really get to touch on a lot was you've expanded. You've got a physical therapy, I believe, 
in Monmouth, is that correct? Correct. We got the MDH Monmouth Clinic, uh, physical therapy up there, a convenience clinic. Um, yeah, it, everything's been going really well up there. Very supportive community. Uh, really been just incredible how many people have been welcoming us into the community. Uh, we've got some staff members up there who are part of the Monmouth community, live there in Monmouth. Um, so really the familiar face when you walk into the clinic. Obviously, we were talking about sports, and we've talked about physical therapy and rehabilitation. That's a, a large – I don't know if it's a large part of what you guys do, but it's a very active way for you to be involved in the sports in the area, especially high school sports, and you've got a very solid – physical therapy and rehabilitation department our sports medicine and rehabilitation department we've got our clinic up in the hospital on the third floor we have our clinic in north lafayette we've got one over in our bushnell family practice and as we just talked about up in the monmouth clinic as well uh as you know Dwayne, sports is big in this area and it's great i've got children who played sports for macomb or are playing sports for macomb we know how important that is make sure you have the athletic trainers that you have the proper medical care they're on the sidelines for the student athletes. Um, so anytime that we can be a sponsor of that to help and just help not only promote the MDH brand, but more importantly, take care of the patients, take care of the student athletes. That's what's most important. I think one of the biggest things parents, fans can see in person is uh, Lindsay Kessler, all those trainers that are at these games and and they and they it's 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 I don't want to say it's funny but it, it's really cool to see how they become ingrained in those teams that they are part of as trainers I used to work in college athletics before making the switch over to MDH and in my near 25 years of working in sports information you know we would be involved with the teams quite a bit but as also one of the sports staff members, we also work closely with the athletic trainers. There's a lot of different personnel involved, more than just the coach and the student athlete that help make that successful. When you have a strong support staff like athletic trainers, for instance, uh, it's just going to make your program stronger. You want your kids healthy. You want them to be out there as much as possible. If they are injured, okay, what can we do to best care for them to make sure that they get on the court quickly and as healthy as possible? I think MDH and the schools, though, are lucky to have the quality of trainers that you've got that, that not only do a good job, but truly, I mean, you can watch by the Facebook posts and the and how, how much they care about the teams. Even if they don't treat somebody on a team, the team, they become part of that team. They do. And it's, I think the more they deal with it, they're there on a daily basis, um, you know, they want to see those student athletes succeed and they certainly do have a, uh, personal investment in, in the teams and seeing the kids, the student athletes, uh, the coaches succeed and the school succeed. Okay. So we've talked about how important trainers are and, and everything to the to MDH and, but you mentioned a few minutes ago, I think it's been a few minutes ago, seconds ago, maybe, but you talked about how you spent years in sports information. I did. How does a sports information guy end up as a public relations guy and then a VP at a hospital? Well, when I got started, uh, I had an interest in doing a lot of writing when I was in college. And my academic advisor knew me, he knew my family, and he knew we were uh, big sports fans. And he said, Pat, you realize there's a profession out there called sports information. And he explained it to me. And I said, so essentially, I kind of get paid to watch sports. And he goes, well, yeah, kind of. So that really started my interest. And then when I was at Northern Iowa, that's where I got my undergrad degree. I gradually graduated in public with public relations degree. Uh, I worked at the student office at Northern Iowa, and then that led me go to grad school uh, out at Gonzaga University. I got my athletic administration master's degree, and my first job was actually at Eastern Illinois, and I was the PR person for Eastern Illinois University Athletics. I was the assistant director. Uh, worked seven great years. That's where I met my wife Susan. Our two older boys were born there. Um, led to my first full-time director job at Georgia Southern University. And then from there, I came up to Macomb. I was at Western Illinois for eight years as the uh, sports information director. But as really, as I joked when I started at MDH, instead of writing about touchdowns and field goals and home runs, now I get to write about doctors, uh, the staff, and just taking care of patients and the positive patient stories. So it's really... Instead of athletics where I'm telling a story about student-athletes, now I get to tell the story about 
our staff and um, great interactions with our patients. And then, um, you know, you were talking about being named vice president. I do a lot with the Macomb Chamber of Commerce. I'm on the board of directors. Uh, one of the perks of working at Western and working in living in Macomb, it's a smaller community. You get to know a lot of people, and we're able to build some great relationships. And it's been uh, just a blessing to be able to carry those relationships from Western over to MDH and now um, expand on those as my new role as vice president of business strategy. Well, you've had a couple of kids go through Macomb. And yep. they've had some success post post Macomb as well, playing some sports, I think, right? Correct. So how important is it to be involved in you know, TSSR isn't a huge deal by any stretch of the imagination. We're I guess if when you're talking about communications, it's kind of the same thing as MDH, right? We're the small market provider of sorts. Why is it important for you to be involved and, and to make sure MDH is involved in what we're doing? Well, as we said earlier, uh, this is a big sports area. There's a very passionate fan base, and if they can't be in the games, they want to be able to try and watch the game somehow. Um, so I remember when you first started, we had our initial conversations. Uh, I really uh, was very impressed with the vision that you had to carry this on and where you wanted to go, and I thought this is a great opportunity for us as the marketing director to help promote our MDH brand, but also help promote high school athletics and help promote TSSR game time live. And it's been a great relationship. We, uh, anytime I tune in, it's a, you guys do a great job broadcasting the events home and road. I know it's a lot of work for you guys to put this on. And I think our, the fans are very appreciative and, you know, it's just a great opportunity for visibility. Um, we're able to tell a story about our staff members and the great things that we're doing here at the hospital, all while watching some great high quality sports productions. Well, we appreciate that. Thanks for taking a few times, a few laughs and a little mess up from me occasionally. But if you watch very many of our broadcasts, you should be used to that. <laughs> Whenever you hey, hear me talk, I tend to mess up. No, it's, it, you do a great job and it's a, it's a great pleasure being a part of this uh, partnership. We'll be back with the second half right after this on TSSR Game Time Live presented by MDH. It was the community that really drew me back to Macomb. I'm from a small community, uh, and I'm from a farm family, and ultimately I always wanted to practice in a place like that, and I felt that I had uh, the ability to connect to people who with a similar background from me, and the fact that the staff members at the hospital and the support, every, all the support staff at the hospital was also focused with the goal of patient care, it felt like it just all came hammered at home for me. When I walk in and talk to my patients, I like my patients first and foremost to feel comfortable. I like to keep it real with them. I like them to know that I'm there to listen to them and to help them understand some of the processes that they may be going through. The most rewarding aspect that I feel with caring for patients is when those patients come back in and they tell me how much better they feel for something that I have helped them accomplish in their healthcare. Back inside Bushnell Prairie Central High School, home of the Spartans. Spartans Trail, 11 to 21, right here on TSSR Game Time Live. Will Thomas bringing you all the action here as we get second half underway. Rebels basketball to start. Rotated around. Rebels in no rush. Head coach saying, take your time. So they will, as that one's intercepted by McGrew. She's going to take it and stop at the top of the key and let teammates catch up. As Nelson will take the three from the right wing. That one's no good. Rebounded by France into the hands of Horwettel. And she carries the basketball and will head back the other direction. Right side, intercepted, free lane towards the basket for Tommy Gorsuch. Her lab's off the front of the rim, though. Put back by Horwettel is no good, but she is fouled. Oh, 
The first one's off the right side here, having a little bit of a camera. Second free throw is off. We'll go straight on here right now until we...
in and talk to my patients, I like my patients first and foremost to feel comfortable. I like to keep it real with them. I like them to know that I'm there to listen to them and to help them understand some of the processes that they may be going through. The most rewarding aspect that I feel with caring for patients is when those patients come back in and they tell me how much better they feel for something that I have helped them accomplish in their health care.
experience with McDonough District Hospital was amazing. I have a lot of allergies complicated by nasal problems. And the procedure I had is Vive Air. Dr. Sparks was incredible. The Vive Air procedure is a radiofrequency ablation procedure. She no longer has to do any medications to breathe, so she gets much more restful night's sleep and a short little office procedure and have somebody that feels like it's totally changed their life means the world. It's a permanent improvement on the quality of your life. When I walk in and talk to my patients, I like my patients first and foremost to feel comfortable. I like to keep it real with them. I like them to know that I'm there to listen to them and to help them understand some of the processes that they may be going through. The most rewarding aspect that I feel with caring for patients is when those patients come back in and they tell me how much better they feel for something that I have helped them accomplish in their healthcare. My experience with McDonough District Hospital was amazing. I have a lot of allergies complicated by nasal problems. And the procedure I had is Vive Air. Dr. Sparks was incredible. The Vive Air procedure is a radiofrequency ablation procedure. She no longer has to do any medications to breathe, so she gets much more restful night's sleep and a short little office procedure and have somebody that feels like it's totally changed their life means the world. It's a permanent improvement on the quality of your life.
Thank you. 